Let's pray. Father God, you are with us always. Lord, we thank you for the testimony today, the sharing about how you have been with us all the while, Lord, in the darkest spaces. And even in the happiest moments, let us be reminded that you are with us always. Lord, we love you and we are grateful to you for who you are, for your presence in our midst always, Lord. And Lord, I also want to take a moment to thank you for your people who give generously, Lord. I want to, I want to ask for your blessing on our offering this morning. I want to thank you for the provision that you give us, Lord, that, that we have this community, this place, these people, Lord. I ask that you bless the tithes and the offerings to your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Okay, I don't even know what to say after all that testimony. What a blessing, right? All right, um, I'm going to invite the kids. If you would like to go to Children's Church, this is the time. Miss Annie is waiting in the back for you. Oh, very exciting. Children's Church is so great that children run to it. Do you see this? It's a good thing. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to continue in our service, um, in our sermon series on friendship um, as we um, consider our vision of building healthy relationships. And today we're going to do that through the story of Ruth and Naomi, um, which is just this beautiful relationship, this beautiful, what starts out as, as kind of this relationship of obligation became, becomes one of choice and of friendship and great depth and great beauty. So we're going to talk about that. Um, yeah, I want to pray again. Let's do it. Father God, we just want to pray for the message, and we want to pray that, um, that you would be served through it, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our minds to what you would have us know. Lord, that you would guide the words and the message, um, and that you would shape us to be more like you every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Have any of you ever said this phrase to a friend? You can count on me, right? Or you've maybe heard somebody say that to you, right? You can count on me. I think we have had that conversation. Yeah. And it's kind of this thing that people have been saying for a really long time. Like, I actually researched it because I'm weird like that, but it said... Like, since the 1200s, people have been saying this phrase, you can count on me. I know, I was like, is this kind of some new colloquialism? But no, 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 it's very old. We've been saying it a really long time. And the idea is that when you are looking out at your friends or when something's going on with you, if somebody says, you can count on me, you can count in the number of people who will show up, whoever has raised their hand and said, you can count on me. It's powerful, it's important. It's important to have people we can count on, and it's important to be a person that others can count on. Ruth and Naomi had a relationship like this. They said to one another in one way or another, you can count on me, and they were there for each other. So we're going to talk through this story, and I know a lot of us know it already, but we're going to look at it through the eyes of this particular relationship with Ruth and Naomi, the friendship that they had. And it's kind of a neat, the book of Ruth is this neat book, kind of um, sitting in the Old Testament, kind of unto itself in a, in a, in a sense. Um, and we just get to look at the lives of these people and how God works in their midst through relationship. It starts off as a really sad story, really sad. Naomi is a woman who she and her husband and her two boys are forced to flee from where they live because of famine. There is not enough food where they are from, Bethlehem. And think about this. Think about living through famine and what that might be like. Not only do you not have enough food, but you don't have enough to feed your children. And you are watching the people around you not have enough to sustain themselves. Really, really sad. 
And it must have been at a really grand scale because they literally left and went to a foreign land where they knew no one to live their lives, to make sure that they could ensure some kind of security for their children. So they moved there, and they actually kind of did okay. They assimilated. The boys married women from Moab, which is where they went to, and they conducted family life. But unfortunately, Ruth's husband died. And then Ruth's children died, leaving Ruth alone, not Ruth, Naomi, alone with her two daughter-in-laws. Kind of a scary position for a woman at that time. Women didn't have a lot of authority or power. And so here she is, a woman with her two daughter-in-laws, trying to figure out what to do. Well, she learns that things are better in her homeland, and so she can go back, and, and there's no longer famine. And she packs up the girls and says, come on, guys, we're going, and they start their trip. But her conscience won't allow her to follow through with that. She worries about these girls. She's grown to love them. They are her daughter-in-laws, and she thought she was going to live a long life with them. And she knows that there is an uncertain future returning back to their land because her husband's gone. It's just her as the head of the family at this point. And she knows that the girls, it's going to be uncertain for them there. And she, out of great love for them, says, go home. Go back to your parents. You'll be safe there. You'll be fed. You'll be with people who love you. But the women don't want to go. They want to stay with her. And eventually... The oldest, I mean, the um, wife of the oldest son does return. She goes back to Moab. But Ruth, who is her other daughter-in-law, refuses. She loves her, and she stays with her, and she makes a commitment to her. And her relationship, Ruth's relationship with Naomi, kind of transitions from this relationship of, you know, I'm your daughter-in-law, so I kind of have to do what you say, to I choose you. I choose this relationship. It's not just some kind of an obligation, right? But Ruth takes it to a different level and says, no, I choose you. I choose this relationship. I choose this friendship. And so what was once obligation is now choice. Um, so let me find the passage. In Ruth um, 1, 16 through 17, when Naomi has urged Ruth to return, Ruth replies, don't urge me to abandon you, to turn back from following after you. Wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Wherever you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord do this to me, and more so, if even death separates me from you. Ruth committed her life to Naomi's. We will likely never be in this kind of a situation, but friendship takes commitment, right? We got to say, you can count on me. I'll be there, and we have to mean it. Healthy relationships require it. If you say you can count on me and you don't show up, it's terrifying for your friends, right? Right? And if somebody says you can count on me to you and they're not there when you need them, is that a healthy friendship? No. And it's hard. It's hard to commit to, to ask people to count on you and to always be there. But it's what a healthy relationship does. We think about how this story kind of shows us what, you know, we, we talked a lot today about how God shows up for us, right? And we're God's people, living in the world, living his message. We need to show up too for one another. God gave us to one another for that. Okay, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so we have to show up. We have to say, you can count on me. That's what a healthy friendship does. We commit. We commit. And I'm going to tell you this com commitment, it will inconvenience us right? It will mean that sometimes we have to do things we don't want to do. Sometimes we will have to set aside our own plans in favor of taking care of somebody else because we need to show up. Showing up means everything. 
So friendship is showing up. Friendship is being committed. It's also sacrifice and being selfless. And we see this in the relationship between Ruth and Naomi. Naomi was willing to sacrifice so that Ruth could go back and have a good life, right? So that she would be protected and loved and cared for with her family, whatever that might mean. At least it was something that was kind of known as opposed to taking her with her back, right? She didn't want this uncertain situation. Additionally, this trip was not probably an extremely safe one. And think about, like, when Naomi said to Ruth, go, Naomi literally was making the choice to, like, send her for her good, and then Naomi was off by herself, alone, with nobody to count on. But she was willing to live that way for the betterment of Ruth. She was selfless. Fortunately for her, though, Ruth was selfless as well. And Ruth was willing to give up what could be security for what might be in the future to tell Naomi, you can count on me. This relationship is important. You're my priority. I'm going to be there. And they made it. They made it to Bethlehem. And when they get there, they have the issue of how are they going to eat? Right? Because they don't, they don't have, like, crops that they've been taking care of. They don't have... You know, maybe there's a home there to go back to or something, but, but there's not much. There are no sons to work land. There are just these two women, one of whom's a little bit older at this point. So Ruth does what she can. She goes out to the fields and she does something called gleaning, which means she walks behind the harvesters and picks up the little pieces that can be gathered of the wheat. And she doesn't just gather for herself. She gathers enough so that both she and Naomi can eat so that they can have sustenance. She takes upon that herself for Naomi. And I think about what a difficult thing this must have been, this whole back-breaking, you know, leaned over all day long, picking up little tiny things um, just to be able to eat. But she made this sacrifice. She was selfless in her friendship. It's not easy to always be selfless, is it? <laughs> right? Right? Because we can all think of the list of things that we need to do, but sometimes we have to set them aside, right? And allow those things to sit so that we can show up and our friends can count on us. Naomi could count on Ruth. And the wonderful thing that happened is that as, Naomi, as Ruth was out there gleaning, picking up the grain, she was noticed by the owner of the field, and he was a good man, and he was a relative. His name was Boaz. Boaz sees her hard work and sacrifice. He's heard about her. He knows who she is. And he tells his people, just drop a little grain her way. Let her have a little extra. Let her drink water with our people. Just kind of take care of her. Make sure she's safe. And Ruth falls on her knees. And she's so grateful. And Boaz responds in uh, Ruth 12, 11 through 12. Everything that you did for your mother-in-law after your husband's death has been reported fully to me. How you left behind your father, your mother, and the land of your birth and came to a people you hadn't known beforehand. May the Lord reward you for your deed. May you receive a rich reward from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you come to seek refuge. Ruth was selfless right? Healthy relationships have to be selfless. We have to give of ourselves for the betterment of others. And I think about this, I think like Naomi, Ruth could have watched her starve, right? It was a choice she could have made. She could have decided she was just going to take care of herself. But how do you live with yourself when your friend is suffering? How do you do that? It's not easy, right? If we, you know, if as God's people, we care. We care about what's going on with others. So in healthy relationships, when we see a brother or sister suffer, we show up. We take care of them. We see this in Ruth. We see that she did this. And it becomes a wonderful thing, this relationship between these two women, taking care of one another. 
So that when Naomi has a chance to take care of Ruth, because Naomi's a little more savvy than Ruth, she figures out a way to kind of ensure a future for Ruth because she doesn't want her to just have to go and pick green every day. She wants more for her because she loves her. Because she wants to show up for her. So Naomi hatches a plan. After Ruth has been out there gleaning in the fields for a while, all of the wheat's gone, all the barley's gone, she hatches this plan to set up Ruth for marriage. She says, clean up, go over to where the men are, are dealing with the grain, the threshing floor, go over there and watch what's going on. And when things quiet down at night, when the work is done and they've all eaten and they've fallen asleep, go over and lay down next to Boaz. Now, this is risky behavior, right? I'm pretty sure it wasn't okay with everybody if a woman moved into an area where all the men were working while they were asleep and laid down next to a man. In fact, well, huh? Well... There's a lot of discussion about what actually went on there, but we're, hmm, we're going to keep it G today. Um, let's just say, huh? Well, and it didn't end up scandalous is what the good thing is, right? The appearance was definitely scandalous. However, Boaz knowing I believe, knowing the character of of Ruth, having spent a lot of time watching her caring for her mother-in-law. And even this last passage we read that tells us what he was thinking of her, he took it as it was intended, and he was incredibly complimented. So, you know, it's really kind of a great thing that that Naomi was actually looking at the long term for Ruth, kind of wanting to see that she would have a good life. This didn't really necessarily ensure anything specifically for Naomi. I mean, Ruth could have just at some point said, okay, hey, thanks. Glad you, glad you like, sent me over to this guy and he's going to be my husband. See ya. It's not what happens, though. Boaz works it out. It's a long story, but he works it out so that they are eventually married and they have a child. And it ends up being just this wonderful blessing for Naomi. Because Naomi... And Ruth, well, they are family now, right? They've lived this life together. They've shown up for one another. They love each other. And the women rejoice with Naomi after the birth of Ruth's son, Obed. And this is what they say. May the Lord be blessed who today hasn't left you without a redeemer. May his name be proclaimed in Israel. He will restore your life and sustain you in your old age. Your daughter-in-law, who loves you, has given birth to him. She's better for you than seven sons. This is saying a lot. Naomi took the child and held him to her breast, and she became his guardian. The neighborhood women gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They called his name Obed. He became Jesse's father and David's grandfather extraordinary friendship. It redeemed Naomi's life. It redeemed Ruth's life. It's a beautiful thing. We need people in our lives that say, I'll show up. I'll be there. You can count on me. It'll change our lives. And we need to be the people that are those ones that stand up and say, you can count on me. Because we know who we are as a saved people, right? We know that God says time and time again, you can count on me. And we are called as his witness to live that out in the world. When we say you can count on me, and people know why we say it, and they know who we are, that we are people who love Jesus and will follow through because of that love, because of the way God loves people and loves us, It changes lives, changes the world. If you want to be a friend you can count on, be a friend that can be counted on. Let's pray. Lord God, you are 
so good for us. You are always, always there when we need you, even though we don't always see it, Lord, even though we're not always paying attention. You are there. You love us. We can always count on you. Help us to remember that and help us to be people that can be counted on. Help us to be people that are committed to one another in friendship, that are selfless and sacrificing and loyal and trusting. Help us to take to heart the beautiful thing that you did through the relationship of Ruth and Naomi. In Jesus' name, amen.